Hey everyone, let's learn how to create a camera shake inside the Blender. There are two types of camera shakes we can create with the technique that I'm going to show you today. First one is the slow camera shake and the second one is the strong camera shake. Slow camera shakes are used to make the scene more dynamic or maybe a bit chaotic. And strong camera shakes are used to show an impact of something. For example, an impact of an explosion, an impact of two objects hitting each other or an impact of you smashing the like button. Now, let's begin. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use a default Blender scene. I'm not going to delete anything and I'm especially going to keep the default cube. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the camera view, which I'm going to do by clicking numpad zero. And I'm also going to turn on screencast keys so you can see what I'm clicking here. So if you hit numpad zero, you enter the camera view, or you can also hit this camera icon and go inside the camera view. Now, second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to do left click and select the camera. And if I use G or shift F or shift tilde, I can move it around. Now. In order to create camera shake, we first need a keyframe on our camera. So on my starting frame, which is zero, I'm going to set the start frame to zero. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to press on I and then I'm going to do location and rotation to set a keyframe for location and rotation. Now, after we did that, we need to split the screen to open the graph editor on our left side. So let's do just that. Move your mouse up somewhere over here below these panels. And then once you see this cursor, you can do right click and then do vertical split. So if you do vertical split and then left and then left click to release it somewhere, we're gonna split the screen. Now go up here, which is the viewport, click this and then switch this to graph editor. After you switch to graph editor, we're gonna see this menu. Now, after I set my keyframe here on frame zero, I can again bring out the sidebar using any if you don't see it. And then I need to go to modifiers, click on add modifier, and then we're gonna use noise, but we're not gonna do that just yet. We're going to expand this menu, which says object transform. And if I click that, I'm going to see different axes. So since we set the keyframe for location and rotation, we see three axes for location and we see three axes for the rotation. Now let's first try to add the camera shake on X location. So if I click on G and X, you can see that I'm going to add camera shake inside this direction. So camera is going to be shaking like this. So I'm going to click on X location. Make sure you have it selected rather than the others and then click on add modifier and then click on noise. And then if I hit play, if I zoom in and zoom out on my graph editor, you can see I have different curves. And if I hit play, my camera is gonna start shaking like this. Now I can customize this. I can make this slower. I can make this faster. So if I turn up the scale, if I left click and drag this up, the camera shake is gonna be more slow, gradual like this. If I turn up the strength, it's gonna be slow. It's gonna be stronger and it's gonna have more curves and it's gonna be like this. If I turn up the strength and turn on the scale, you know what happens. It basically goes faster like this. You can also play around with offset and depth, and which I don't do that often because I mean customize the scale, the strength, and also I do the restrict frame range, which I'm gonna show you as well. And also if you don't want the graph, if you don't want the camera shake to be on its full strength, you can click on influence and then maybe turn this down, turn out the strength so that you can reduce the strength of the camera shake. Also, if you want to, if you want the camera shake, for example, to start on frame 10, you can do that pretty easily instead of frame zero. For example, there is an explosion on frame 10. I can click on restrict frame range, check this, then expand this menu. And then in the starting frame, you can start, you can type 10. And in the end frame, you can type, for example, 50, if you want this to end on frame 50. Then if I play, you can see camera shake starts at 10 and then ends at frame 50. I'm going to repeat it again. And then if you don't want this to be sudden, if you want to be gradual, for example, like a fade in fade out effect, you can do that pretty easily as well. You can play around with this blend in and then blend out. For example, I can blend in somewhere on frame 10. It's going to start blending. It's going to start shaking slowly. If I look at this curve, you can see that it's going to do something like this. If I do blend in on zero, it's going to be gradual. It's not going to be gradual. It's going to be sudden. But if I do blend in like this, the camera is going to basically start shaking, easing in. Then I can do the same thing for the end frame. Instead of this manual drop, I can do fade out, blend out, and do something like this. All right, now that you get the idea of how camera shake works, I'm going to customize this and make, for example, a strong camera shake. And then I'm going to apply this to different location and rotation axes as well. But we don't have to do it manually. We can just copy and paste it easily. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit, maybe make the scale smaller. And then I'm going to, I'm not going to use this restrict frame range. So I'm going to untick this so that I don't use it. And let's say we created explosion and I'm going to set this end frame to 70. 
control c control v here and then i think this might be good enough for the x location if we want to do like an explosion or something maybe turn up the scale slightly once you're happy with this you can click on copy which is this one copy f modifiers now, if I want to insert the camera shape on other axes, for example, Y location, then I can click on this one, paste F modifiers. And this is going to paste the modifier with the same settings, basically the same settings you did for the X location. Now, if I play, you can see that my camera is moving not only on the X direction, but also on the Y direction like this. Now, if I want my camera to go up and down as well, I can do this easily. So I'm going to click on the Z location and then click on this paste F modifiers. Now if I click press play, you can see the camera shake is going to go crazier. And we can do this with the rotation as well. Now, when, when I add the camera shake, I mainly use location and I don't use all of those locations. Sometimes I use X location and maybe I rotate the camera manually as well. But you can also add this to rotation. But if you add that, it might go a bit crazy. So if I paste the modifier, for example, on X, locate, X rotation, you can see that it's going to go crazy. So I don't think it's necessary to add camera shake on locations because as you can see, it goes crazier. If I add more and more, you can see that's going to go way, way crazy, which we don't need. So I'm going to control Z. But yeah, you get the main idea. The main thing is to set a keyframe, add a modifier, noise, and then adjust it in like different frames and all of that stuff. You can increase and decrease the influence. You can restrict the frame range and so on. And then also if you scale up this, you can create like a slower camera shake, which I also used in some of my animations. And that looks pretty cool as well if you want to make the scene more dynamic. So yeah, this is how you can easily create a camera shake inside the Blender. As you can see, it's nothing too hard. Also, if you want to learn how you can create enchanted weapons, how to make the enchantment effect on your Minecraft weapons, then you can check out this video right here. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.